What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey and today we're going to rank all of the brawlers as a free to play player. So who are the best and who are the worst brawlers if you are free to play? So to do this I had to keep a couple things in mind. One, I'm actually not going to include the legendary brawlers in these rankings because yeah you can get them as a free to play player but for the most part almost the majority of the free to play players don't have any legendaries. So I'm just going to exclude them to make it a little bit of a more fair and even list. The second thing I'm assuming is I'm making all of these brawlers even and saying none of them have their star power. So that's a big discrepancy whether they have their star power or not. But as a free to play player, it's hard to get that many star powers on brawlers. Sure, you can work your way up to a couple. But for the most part, you're going to have hardly any with any or even no brawlers with star powers. The other thing I kept in mind is this ranking is based on the overall strength of the brawlers in each game mode combined. So it's more of an overall ranking. The combined skills of the brawlers in each game mode together is going to determine where these brawlers rank. Now, if you're wondering, I do have a free to play account. It's about 4000 trophies. So I understand your struggle as a free to play player and without further ado, let's get into the ranking. Well, to me, the worst free to play brawler and probably the worst non free to play brawler is Piper. Piper is great in bounty, but she's not very good anywhere else. And on top of that, her star power is actually a pretty good one and it makes Piper a lot stronger. So without that star power, she just doesn't nearly have the same firepower as she does before. It's much harder for her to get kills if she's not standing in bushes, getting that extra up to 400 damage per shot. That's definitely a big difference in her skill level and bounty and how good she is there. And if she's not amazing in bounty, well, she's kind of screwed over else. She's not that great in smash and grab. She can get some kills and showdown, but she's not that great, not good in heist and not good in brawl ball. So to me, she's easily the worst brawler in the game right now, especially as a free to play player. Now the second worst brawler in the game as a free to play player to me is Pam. Pam is still going to be really good in smash and grab as a free to play player, but she no longer has the same OP ability that she did before the recent balance changes. She's now sort of just okay, especially without her star power. She doesn't have the same healing, she doesn't have the same staying ability, she doesn't deal a lot of damage. She's just not that strong overall. She's definitely really decent and really good in smash and grab. She's usable in a couple bounty maps, but she's not that great. She just doesn't have enough damage. Uh, she's not good in heist. She's just okay in showdown. And she's just okay in Brawl Ball. To me, she's just not versatile enough to get a high ranking. Alright, and now the third worst brawler as a free-to-play player is going to be Bo. Bo, to me, has a really strong star power on certain maps. But on those maps, that's what makes Bo really good is his star power. If he's not able to see... You know six to seven tiles in the bushes helping out his teammates and himself like on outlaw camp snake prairie any other maps with a good amount of grass that's where Bo is a really really good option and easily one of the best on those maps but without that you know he does have decent health and his mines are pretty good but besides that he's overall kind of mediocre he's decent in smash and grab he's decent in bounty he's not very good in showdown he's not very good in heist and he's not very good in brawl ball so with that combined without his star power, it puts him at 15 on my rankings. Now at 14, it starts to get a little interesting. The next two brawlers are ones that would probably be ranked a good amount higher if they had their star powers. But without them, this is why they have their ranking for the most part. So at 14, I have Jesse. Jesse, definitely a good brawler in smash and grab. She's a lot better now than she used to be for sure. Her turret is hard to deal with, especially in this tank meta. But without her star power, her turret doesn't have the same staying ability. And that's partly what makes it so hard to deal with. If you can keep her turret up, all of a sudden someone's shooting it, trying to deal with it. They're taking damage from it, but the turret is just staying up. And not only that, Jesse's bouncing shots off the turret, healing it, and then getting hits from other people. So without her star power, that's where you really see Jesse at 14. She's going to be pretty good in smash and grab still, but besides that, she's going to be just okay in bounty, just okay in brawl ball. 
not that good in showdown and not good in heist so that's where you really see her at 14 if she had her star power she would be a good amount higher and the same thing with the next brawler so at 13 i have mortis mortis has definitely changed a lot recently he's still pretty good in brawl ball even without his star power he's not op like he was before um in smash and grab he's just okay there's too much of a tank meta for mortis to be really that good especially in bounty as well but bounty is probably his second best area besides brawl ball on certain maps, he's able to definitely deal with those long-range brawlers pretty well. His damage is good enough now that he gets a lot more kills than he did before. But without that soul ability, it really makes him hard for him to stay alive that long. As he still doesn't have that high of a health. And he's much harder for him to escape now without that increased dash range. So to me, without his star power, he really suffers a lot. That really, really helps him stay alive and get those extra kills. Especially later on in the game as those souls start stacking up and all of a sudden you think the mortis is about to die but then he gets another thousand or two thousand health right away and that's when he finishes you off and gets an unexpected kill or move so that's where you see mortis at 13 on my best free to play brawlers ranking now at 12 we have a brawler whose star power isn't that great but he's a pretty good brawler overall and that's brock so Brock, one of the best brawlers in Bounty, and he's now one of the better options in Heist with the recent Colt and Ricochet nerfs. Brock is definitely getting a little bit more action than he was before. He's still not that great in Brawl Ball, in uh, Smash and Grab, or in Showdown. He's just okay in those areas. Uh, he doesn't suffer that much without his star power. It's not that strong of a star power. That's where you see him at 12, a little bit above these other guys. He's still really good in Bounty, and he's good in Heist. To me, he's still a pretty good option. It's just you can't really play him that much in Smash and Grab, Brawl Ball, or Showdown. Now, at 11, we have a Brawler who has a good star power, so he suffers a little bit without it. And he's honestly really decent in a lot of things, but he's not that great in much. And that's Ricochet. So Ricochet, that big health nerf hit him pretty hard in my opinion. But he's still one of the better brawlers in a couple different areas. He's still very consistent. You can get a lot of different bounce shots with him. He's going to be okay in smash and grab. He's going to still be one of the better options in bounty. But he's not that great. He's not super strong because he can get good damage. But he's going to end up dying a good amount as well. He's not that great in brawl ball. He's okay in showdown. Um, he's decent in heist now. He's not that great. Um, his star power helps him out a lot. That bounce, the extra bounce damage is definitely really strong with Ricochet as that's the easiest way for him to get hits. But he's basically really decent in a lot of areas. Not really bad at anything and not really great at it. Okay, now at number 10, we have another brawler who's very, very versatile. Who's no longer great in anything, but he's not particularly bad in anything either. And that's Barley. Barley got a nerf recently with his throwing speed, and that hit him pretty hard. He also got a buff with his star power, so his star power is actually now one of the better star powers in the game. But of course, this is for free-to-play players, so without that star power, he's suffering a good amount. He's still a really good option in Heist, as throwers are definitely really strong there. And he still does a lot of damage. He's no longer crazy strong like he was before. You can definitely play other options instead of him now. But he's still a good option. He's still good in showdown. He's not great. He's not that great in bounty. He's okay in brawl ball. He's still pretty good in smash and grab. Depends on the map there for him. Basically to me throwers are going to be versatile. Almost no matter what, they're, just their ability to throw over walls works on so many different objectives and game modes. He no longer has the same damage output as he did before, but his super is great in objective based games. He can push people back and smash and grab. He can easily force people into certain areas. Or for instance in Heist, he can deal a ton of damage at once. In Brawl Ball, it can be good at stopping enemies really fast or forcing them from coming in a certain area of the map or they have to take a lot of damage. So he's still a very versatile brawler, but he's just not really strong anymore. All right, at number nine, this is another similar pattern, another versatile brawler, but this time his star power isn't that great. And that's gonna be Colt. Colt at number nine, he got hit pretty hard with his recent range nerf. He still does a ton of damage, but he no longer hits nearly as many shots as he did before. So honestly, he's not really great in anything. He's pretty much 
decent in almost everything. His ability to break down walls with his super is still a really useful super. It can open up the map, it can get to the objectives in heist. Um, it's still a really good ability and he can do a lot of damage possibly. He's a lot harder to do that now so he's definitely fallen down a lot. But his star power is not that important to him either, so that's where you see him a little bit higher in the free-to-play rankings, and I'd probably have him in the non-free-to-play. He's still a decent brawler. As I said, he's decent at pretty much everything, but he's not really great at anything either. Alright, and now at 8, we have Tara. Tara's star power is not bad, but it's not that great. It's not particularly needed for Tara to be very good. Tara is one of the better options in smash and grab without her star power. Her super is really, really strong and can easily win games in smash and grab. She's okay in bounty. She's pretty good in brawl ball. She's not very good in heist. And she's pretty good in showdown. So Tara is definitely a decent option in a lot of places and great in smash and grab and brawl ball. And that's where you see her at 8. Alright, so now at 7... We're getting into the first real tank, and there's going to be, obviously, there's three other tanks besides this, so they're all in the top seven. It's, even with the recent tank nerfs, it's still a tank meta, and honestly, the tanks don't have the strongest of star powers, so that's where you see them a little bit higher, too. And at number seven, we have El Primo. His star power, really not very strong, so he doesn't suffer much for that in the free-to-play rankings. My problem with El Primo is his ability to deal damage. It's just not that great. He has a ton of health, and... Once he's in close range, he can deal some damage, but it's honestly, he just fires, what, five or six shots, and they deal some damage each, but honestly, you're not going to hit people very often for more than, like, three hits, probably four at max, unless they're just standing still doing nothing, or they're running straight backwards, which is never a good idea, obviously. El Primo, though, is still very useful. His ability to have that much health makes him really good in Brawl Ball, especially with the Mortis nerf. El Primo's probably one of the best offensive options in Brawl Ball now. He's good in sh uh, showdown. He's usable in smash and grab. He's not bad in bounty. Um, he's usable in heist, but not great. El Primo, though, uh, obviously a very solid option. In this tank meta, he's definitely a strong option in a lot of places, but he's probably not great for anywhere besides Brawl Ball. All right, and now at number six, we're into the last thrower, and that's Dynamite. Dynamite, very versatile. As I said, throwers are useful in a lot of different places. Dynamite got a buff recently, and to me, his star power is not very useful. It has some positives, but it also has some negatives. So it really doesn't cause him to be lowered at all in any rankings for free-to-play because his star power is not needed as a free-to-play player for him to be good. Dynamite is now one of the better options in heist and he's still good in showdown He's usable in smash and grab. He's usable in bounty and he's usable in brawl ball for the most part um, He's not that great in brawl ball since there's still a decent amount of mortis But Dynamite with his damage buff he now does a ton of damage and especially since his star power is not needed That's where you really see him at six. He's good in a lot of stuff, and he's not bad at much All right now at five I wasn't quite sure where to put this brawler, but got some buffs recently and seems a lot stronger than she was before, and that's Nita. Nita, to me, is a very strong brawler right now. Is a little bit underrated. She has a lot of health. She's the highest health of any ranged brawler tied with Poco, except for Pam. Pam is the only one who is higher of the range. But to me, Nita is one of the best options in Smash and Grab. She's usable in Bounty, usable in Brawl Ball. She's pretty good in Showdown now, especially with that high health. And she can really out damage people. Her ability to hit around corners definitely gives her an edge over some other Brawlers combined with that high amount of health. It just makes her really hard to deal with. And then once she has her bear, she wins a lot of one-on-ones and that just gives her a good edge over a lot of different Brawlers. And that's where you see her at number five. All right, and now at number four, I think this might surprise some people, but another brawler who got a big buff recently, and that's Poco. To me, Poco is really strong and doesn't need his star power to be good. His star power is honestly just okay, but he's really good in smash and grab. He's probably the best free-to-play option in smash and grab as a gem carrier. He's good in brawl ball. He's okay in bounty. He's actually pretty good in showdown now since he survives so well. As I was saying with Nita, Poco has a ton of health and is really hard to kill now, especially, obviously, with his healing ability. 
So to me, Poco is a little underrated, is a very good team player, can deal a good amount of overall damage over the course of time, obviously isn't great at dealing damage fast, but versus a team, she has a lot of ability, or he has a lot of ability and a lot of utility in that regard, and the ability to stay alive cannot be underrated, and that's why Poco is at number four. Okay, and now we're in the top three. So we got two tanks left. So at number three, we have Bull. Bull got some nerfs recently, but I don't feel like it's impacted him that much, honestly. He still has a good amount of health, same amount as Daryl, and he does a lot of damage. His super is still really useful. He's one of the best tank options in Smash and Grab. He's still a good option in Heist. He's good to decent in Brawl Ball. He's still pretty good in Showdown. He's a very useful option, especially depending on the map, but on those maps where he's good, he's definitely a really strong option. His ability to hide in the grass and deal a ton of damage at point blank really fast is definitely very useful and his super allows him to get right next to people and then build up his next super again. So he's great in a lot of different objective based game modes as he can get right next to enemies and cause the tide to turn really fast. That's where you see Bull really high in this rankings is he has that ability to win games by himself and really cause the enemy team to lose focus on what they're trying to do is he can get behind them or he can kill them really fast right in their face or he's just going to distract them really well. So Bull to me is good in most everything and that's why he's at three. Now at two, we have a brawler whose star power isn't that useful in my opinion, but is not bad. And she's only this high to me because it's a tank meta. Number two is Shelly. Shelly, obviously really, really good at countering tanks. Does a ton of damage at close range, but outranges the tanks and her super absolutely destroys them when she has it. She's not great at heist, but everything else she's pretty good to really good at. Smash and grab, she's not bad. Um, Brawl Ball, she's really good. Bounty, she's not bad. And Showdown, she's definitely a really good option. So to me, Shelly deserves her number two spot. She counters the current meta really well. If you see these tanks get nerfed, Shelly's gonna go down this list as well. But she doesn't particularly need her star power to be very useful. And her ability to break walls is great in a lot of different game modes. And she's a very versatile brawler. And it's, she's not super map dependent, unlike some of these other brawlers. All right, now the number one brawler to me is an unquestionable number one. He doesn't particularly need his star power, but it is somewhat useful. At number one, the best free to play brawler in the game is Daryl. Daryl is just really, really strong right now. He does a ton of damage at close range, but his range isn't too short that he can't chip away at people and still deal some damage and stop them from healing and also build up his super. So he's really good in heist. He's really good in smash and grab. He's okay in Brawl Ball. That's probably his worst game mode. He's good in showdown and he's pretty good in bounty. His super is actually more versatile than you would think and really allows him to get close to any objective that he needs to. You do sort of have to learn where you use his super on certain maps, but once you know that, there's a lot of good options for him. There's a lot of good options for you to use his super on all the different maps. And to me, Daryl is just the most OP of all of these brawlers. And to me, he's the unquestionable number one on not only my free to play ranking, but also my non free to play ranking. All right, guys, so what did you think of my free to play ranking? Would you change any of these rankings up? Anything lower, anything higher? Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you later.